As populations increase and development occurs, it is becoming more and more challenging for governments to ensure the movement of people and goods. The needs and considerations of global citizens are changing, and governments are seeking to implement more sustainable transportation solutions and address problems of congestion, air pollution, and oil dependence. In cities around the world, urbanization and population trends forebode more gridlock than ever. Cities where car culture has taken root are finding it more costly to accommodate more vehicles hitting the roads every day. Traffic crawls and opportunity is lost. The highways in the Tel Aviv metropolitan are very congested and the city center, uh, it's very hard to find a parking place in Tel Aviv center, so people look for alternatives. The current bus system is an option, but people generally prefer to sit in traffic in their own cars as opposed to the bus. Some planners are advocating a solution to this problem. First is to give priority to the buses, which means to take lines that now uh, belong to everybody and to bring it only to, to the buses. Traffic jams influence everybody, including the buses. So unless priority is going to be given to public transport, you'll know when you're getting on the bus, you'll never know when you're going to get off the bus. So you can't really plan your trip knowing that you won't be late to wherever you're going. If you dedicate lanes for public transport, you give them priorities at certain junctions, um, you can actually control the time it takes from point A to B. Dedicated lanes for public transportation take sitting in traffic out of the equation. Passengers board and disembark the buses at stations separated from the roadway. In the meantime, people are still primarily using their cars in Tel Aviv and many other cities around the world. One of the major consequences of congestion are the resulting health impacts of tailpipe emissions. There are at least a thousand cases of death annually in the Tel Aviv region alone that are, are due to, um, to air pollution. Another serious problem that results from cars on the road is climate change impacts of CO2 emissions from the production, transportation and consumption of oil. Greenhouse gases in the transportation uh, sector are just increasing tremendously, you know, it's not going to stop. One solution to the emissions problem from transportation is being advanced in Mazdar City, Abu Dhabi. Mazdar is a carbon-neutral, car-free city where vehicles are prohibited from entering and circulating. To take their place, planners are designing an innovative personal rapid transit system. The idea is that you have automated cars, so public transportation with the character of the personal car, that will take people from A to B with minimal walking distances from their houses or their offices to a station. As the city expands, the PRT system and the technologies associated with it will evolve and become even that much more reliable and sustainable and possibly uh, expandable to other parts other than just Mazdar City. Mazdar City is currently under construction and is slated for completion by 2020. In its first phase, the PRT system will consist of 13 pod cars. When finished, there will be an estimated 3,000 automated pods to accommodate nearly 90,000 commuters. We have the, the passenger, user, passenger interface. In future, the intention will be that um, you would be able to change your destination if you so desired en route. Mazdar is being built with efficiency and sustainability in mind. To achieve the city's carbon neutral goal, the PRT system is being powered by electricity from renewable solar technologies. There's a, a lithium-ion battery at the back of the vehicle. Uh, the battery allows us um, about 60 kilometers of range, including air conditioning use, uh, which is equal to approximately five hours of driving, and recharging is about an hour and a half to two hours. While the PRT system is ideal for use within cities and towns, governments and companies are seeking other electric-powered alternatives to the conventional gasoline-fueled vehicle. Transport and, and the need for fuels for transportation will grow. Um, it's, it's a very mobile world. We know that, that um, uh, fuels, carbon fuels, are finite. Um, and this is not an issue that you think about in terms of 10 years or 20 years. You, you think 30, 40, 50, 60 years ahead. And at one point, uh, it, it makes full sense to, to electrify. Whether it will be faster or slower, that you can debate but it makes full sense to to use renewable sources to capture solar wind whatever energies are out there uh, and 
put them in a smart grid uh, and make sure that that and, and, and fuel cars and make sure that people don't pollute. The introduction of electric vehicles is already being championed by many governments and companies around the world through the development of the battery charging technologies and infrastructures needed to support the mass rollout of EVs. You plug in, you put it in the car, uh, on, and you receive an SMS to your mobile, start charging, finish charging. EVs rely on an infrastructure that's in virtually every home and every business in the developed world and even many, many homes and businesses in the developing world. So you can plug in a car with a minor modification all around the world. Alarming transportation-related problems such as congestion, air pollution, and oil dependence are driving development of innovative technologies supported and implemented by governments and companies around the world. The way people move is undergoing a transition from a 20th century over-reliance on gasoline-powered vehicles to a range of 21st century sustainable transportation solutions.